so I just got back from my high-risk specialist appointment for Everly. If you're new here, my name is Brittany. I am a mom of three girls. One is currently still baking. I'm 30 weeks pregnant with her. Her name is Everly. And then I have a five-year-old Layla and a one-year-old Aurora. Like I said, this morning I had a high-risk pregnancy appointment with the specialist. Basically, we just looked at Everly's heart in detail and we kind of just looked all over her. So we looked at her hands, feet, her brain, head. Um, we looked at her size, literally everything. I'm gonna kind of just go over things that we talked about during the appointment. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage from the ultrasound just because it was the first appointment where my husband was able to go with me and really see Everly in detail. So I just wanted to kind of keep that moment to ourselves and kind of just give my husband that privacy. But anyways, I'm gonna kind of just go over everything that we talked about with the specialist. It was kind of a lot this time. If you guys have been keeping up with my pregnancy journey, Everly does have holoprosencephaly, the most severe form, and then she also has trisomy 13. With both of those disorders, there's just a lot of things that can affect her, like her organs and everything. One thing that we've always known from the beginning is obviously her brain is mainly affected because that's basically what holoprosencephaly is. Her brain didn't split the way it should have. Also knew she has a cleft because that's been very visible pretty early on, around, I think it was like around like 12 weeks, they already suspected that she had a cleft. So I've kind of known that one for a while. We know that she has a heart defect. We didn't know what kind of heart defect. We just know that she has a hole right smack in the middle of her heart. I've known that since about, I wanna say a little bit before 19 weeks. So I've known a few things, but there are a few new things that we talked about today. When the specialist was looking at her heart, basically she has, I think it was called like complex cardiac disease. A lot of her arteries are enlarged and her arteries and her veins in her heart are not where they typically should be. It just has a lot going on with her heart. We also looked at her kidneys and she does have a kidney disease as well. Her kidneys have a little bit of fluid in them we also looked at her feet and her hands. Her right foot is clubbed. Her other one isn't. We looked at her stomach. Her stomach is on the small side. Her head is on the small side. We didn't tell us an estimate about how much she weighs, but she is extremely tiny. He said she was in the 2% to 5% as far as like weight. Oh, she's extremely tiny. She's still not head down. She's still breech. I asked if that's a concern because my OB does not want me to have a C-section. I don't want to have a C-section. I talked about it in a few videos ago, so I don't want to touch on too much pace on that. I asked if Everly being breech at 30 weeks is a concern. He didn't really seem too concerned. He did say it is possible for me to deliver her breech. Typically, there's a lot of risks that come with that and they don't really push for a breech birth just because like I said there are risks associated with it but Everly is on like the two to five percent so she's extremely small like I said so he said it is possible for me to deliver her breech and I should be good like I shouldn't have any issues or anything but he told me to go ahead and talk with my OB and kind of get like a game plan so I'm definitely going to mention that to my OB and see what he thinks I know my OB doesn't want me to have a C-section as well. A lot of people actually asked me that. A lot of people asked why wouldn't I get a C-section because I would get more time with Everly. And that is actually not true. A C-section could actually possibly take more time away from me and Everly. If I can have Everly natural, then I'm gonna 100% push for that. It's just in our best interest. So that's the game plan. So I'm definitely going to talk to my OB about it, see what he thinks, because I don't know if this little girl is going to turn around. You guys know I can have Everly, like, literally any second. So it is a little concerning for me, but if my doctors aren't concerned about it, then I'm not going to stress myself over it. But anyways, 
Aside from the fact that this girl is not head down still, and it's actually pretty funny because I had a OB appointment last week. My OB was doing an ultrasound and he told me that she flipped head down, which I didn't mention to you guys because I just, I knew like deep down, I was like, there's no way this little girl is head down because typically when your baby is flipped and your baby is head down, you can feel like empty space kind of up where your ribs are and it just feels like you can kind of breathe a little bit more when your baby's head down and flipped. It just my stomach feels so full and it just, I don't know how to explain it, but it just doesn't feel like she's flipped to me. And also I haven't felt any kicks like up by my ribs or anything like that. Every movement that I've been feeling has been extremely low and her movements just feel the same to me so i was not convinced at all when my ob told me that she had flipped so i definitely asked about it today i don't know if this girl's like doing somersaults in there and she's just like flipping all crazy or if my ob is just tripping but she is not head down aside from the fact that she hasn't flipped we also did look at her brain today obviously i know there's a lot going on with her brain because that's what holoprose encephaly is your brain doesn't split the way it should have so i already knew her brain was going to look abnormal because her brain just is abnormal she has some cysts in her brain that i did not know she also has a called it a gap in her brain he did say there was a name for it but it was like a really <laughs> weird name so i don't remember what it was but he did say she has a brain disease as well. I'm trying to think of what else we talked about. He said that her eyes are closer than they should be. I think that's about it as far as like what we saw on the ultrasound. We talked about other things such as like delivery and comfort care in the hospital and we talked about like my game plan. We also did talk about like induction if I want to be induced. I don't think I want to be induced. I just feel like I'm kind of evicting her. From what I've seen on the ultrasounds, Everly just seems so at peace in my belly and she plays with the umbilical cord. She just seems so at peace and it brings me so much joy carrying her and feeling her kicks so... I don't think I want to be induced. I think I just want her to come on her own. I also don't want Everly to be monitored during birth. I think I've mentioned this in a few pregnancy updates, but I don't want her to be monitored just because if she does happen to pass away when I'm in labor, I don't want to know. I do want to do comfort care, so I just want them to, you know, keep Everly as pain-free as she can be. I want her to just be comfortable. I want myself to be comfortable. But I think that's pretty much it. But before I go, I'm going to give you guys my 30-week belly shot because the belly is growing. If I left anything out, I will leave a pinned comment down below. As always, you guys can ask me anything in the comments, but please just always be mindful of what you comment. This is still an extremely hard journey. Even though we're aware of everything, this is still our child, so please just keep the comments super positive. Honestly, I thrive off of your guys' positive comments. Whenever I'm down, I just read your guys' comments and they mean so much to me. Even if I don't get to all of your guys' comments, I always like to heart them just so you guys know that I read them and they just mean the world to me. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for keeping up with Everly's journey, our journey, for keeping up with our family. We love you guys so much. We can never thank you guys enough. 